sure I wanted to be going on. Behind the nylon? Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know <laughs> if I wanted to do He's got, he's got a bunch of receipts. Yeah, yeah, have a, have a receipt. Actually, I'm going to set start with it. I haven't seen Chad yet. What's that? Uh, you, can, you can always come forward, Bob, if you're really interested in hearing it. So, to my fellow uh, members, the, uh, the last 22 months, the uh, Expanding Competition Subcommittee of myself, Scott Alexander, Glenn Fevier, Jim Filler, and Chad Ring have been working to recreate uh, the format by which we're going to fly competition rocketry, at least in the near future. When we last, when we last met at Narcon, I believe we were still calling it the SQS, but it has changed. It is now called the National Rocketry Competition. A little snappier name, I think. So, I want to say that we, the, the committee is simply representative of all of you. I think I've said this before. We're just, we're five competitors. We are you people. We are, we are not some non-competition aligned group of people. We have done a good deal of work, I don't know how many hundreds of hours, trying to craft something that met a mission statement that's not about you. And it's not about me. It is about competition going into the future for people who are largely not flying it now for the reasons we chose, and we chose, to remove weighting factors and points because we felt that the structure that had led to the slow decline of competition was possibly rooted in those elements. I say this extemporaneously based on the reflections of the last two years of work on this. And I know this has probably been very difficult for many in this room to accept. But I will say this. I'm, I'm as old or older than any competitor in this room, respectfully, Tripp. <laughs> and this has not been a difficult journey for me to make. The new format I'm extremely excited about, and to be honest, I might not have ever thought that way before. So this is a review of where we're going. August 5th is when the NRC will begin. We have a link to the new sporting code. How many people here have been on the website, downloaded, or at least looked at the new sporting code? Okay. For those of you who have not yet, I encourage you to do so. It's actually, I don't know, if Chad were here, he would tell you how many fewer words it is. So we accomplished something in that regard. Contest and NRC years. So I just want to point out the fact that between NARAMs, two schedules are running. We're all used to a contest year. The contest year is we now define it hasn't changed greatly, but it now will begin the day, the day after NARAM ends, and it will begin and it and it ends the last day of NARAM. So NARAM is now actually included in the contest year. Right now it's it sort of hangs precipitously out in the, the void of non-contest year. The second is the NRC year, which also begins the day after NARAM ends, and it ends on June 30th and is more in the traditional sense, it provides the contest board run by Steve Humphrey, the opportunity to collect all of the results and present the results of the NRC in terms of who will qualify to compete for national championships and, um, and other awards. Dan? Uh, June 30th, is that the last day you can fly a contest? Or the last day you have to submit results? Or well, it would be the last day that you could fly a contest. Our, our qualification. Right. Okay. 
And right, and, and at the end of the NRC year, June 30th, the scoreboard, which I think most of you have heard about now, but let me let me quickly back up again. How many of you were at Narcon? Well, it the scoreboard is the is is going to be the online presence that Chris Kidwell has been developing for us, which is where during the course of the NRC year, your contest scores in the various events, and we're going to see those events, they, you can push those results up. The contest director will push those up, and they'll be confirmed by regional contest chair. But that's where, at any point in time, you'll be able to see how you're performing with respect to your fellow competitors in your competition division, in your age division. So. We presented the fact that the NRC would, would, has a core of eight events. And the basis is that these eight events represent challenge, but they represent simplicity at the same time, and they represent low cost. In the interest in trying to make this as approachable and engaging and potentially affordable for the for the for the new flyer for the young flyer well, for that matter even the older flyer I mean we don't always all have all the money in the world the you know, bottom line is it all costs something and these events as we all know for because basically everyone here is is a competitor with some seasoning knows this is the core of a lot of our competition this is the stuff that we fly at most NARAMs year in and year out and then we branch off to that, things like G helicopters. So we took and we based the engine selections around again. You see a lot of the, the motor selection is 13 millimeter, low cost, simplicity. We have to get an 18 millimeter in order to fly eggs and payloads effectively. But beyond that, again, we, we strive for uh, a very very simple and, and inexpensive approach to flying the NRC. And from these events, the contest board and the contest director, Scott Alexander is the contest director for NARAM 60. Maybe I wasn't supposed to say that yet, but he's the contest director for NARAM 60. Don't. Ah. So, Contest board picks four, four events from the core list. The contest director picks two. And we did arrive at the uh, six events for the uh, for this first inaugural <coughs> NRC year. So this has been up on the website. Anyone here aware that these six events existed because of the website? So that's a smaller turnout of hands. Did people go looking for these events on the website? Was it because you, or because you, you don't know about it because you didn't know to look there? All right, there, we all know the front splash page if you scroll down far enough, and I was always, always asking for a higher position. <laughs> they were only move that announcement up so far, but those, list, those events are listed. So again, uh, the point of the NRC prior to NARAM is that you will be able to fly any or all of these events as much as you want, as frequently as you want. We'll get to that in the course of the show. But these events will all be at NARAM next year. So you're not flying these for no reason. You are flying these because you will fly these at NARAM in addition to other events that the contest director and his crew have yet to select and add on to giving you a full NARAM craftsmanship, and so forth. Age divisions. Who can compete? Any NAR member? Anybody here able to point out the difference in this slide from the one that was at NARCON? Of course, you'd have to have been at NARCON. Yeah, well, you were in on the meeting. All right. <laughs> so, well, B, B goes through college. All right. The most significant change, honestly, is the fact that A division begins at zero. We did have a cutoff at seven years, but we 
we had uh, a bit of a, uh, uh, we had a point brought to our attention and frankly the committee, despite having discussed the whole age and when to start A division and how to cut it off and how to treat it, we shanked on this. We, we missed it. And the board discussed this and only because the board could make a change because it had already ratified this sporting code and only the board can make the changes at this point. There's no RCP process for this, right? We removed the seven year to 14 and made it zero. This is the way it used to be years ago. You know that. It used to, there was no age cutoff. There was a reason there was an age cutoff put in the pink book some number of years ago. Won't go into the details of that. It's not important. But there was a reason for it. But under the NRC's format, there is no need for that arbitrary adjustment. And so the point is, is that if someone under the previous setup was seven years of age at the start of the contest year, fine, they got to fly the contest year. We made that a hard limit. If you turned, if you were six and turned seven, you know, in January, you're going to have to wait till the end of the contest year seemed like that was maybe not the best idea. So this is your age based on, on July 1st or June 30th? Well, it was based on July 1st when it was a seven year cutoff. No, 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 the, the other end of the age, the other, 14. Oh, yeah. yes, that is based on July 1st. And that, so if you're, if you're 14 and turn 15, for instance, you'll remain in a, a division because that was the age you started the contest year on. So, Start of the contest year, not July 1st. Pardon me? It's the start of the contest year. Oh, that's July 1st. <laughs> Old habits. Yeah. August, Die hard. August or whatever in here. Right. In the so day after day. this is far more inclusive, and the and the and the and the and the, and the operation of the NRC doesn't doesn't mean that a, a parent who is potentially an R member who has a young son or daughter who isn't they can't get them in our membership because the the rural requirements being that it takes two NAR members they can't make that young person a NAR member and that they can't go out and just together fly NRC events or the other way around the young son or daughter dad I would really like to start flying some NRC events well if, if dad just buys a membership they can go out then uh, at a family rate they could then go out and just fly NRC events the two of them I mean the potential, I see the potential opportunity in that situation. So I hope on reflection that you will, you will as well. Before you go on, yep. does that team line apply to A and B divisioners can no longer be part of teams with adults? No, they can still be because, <sighs> note the bottom, teams fly in the division of the oldest member. So. If you want to team up with a young person, Bob, they'll simply fly with you in D division. But there's no team division? Well, D is team. Well, Why not just make a T? I'm sorry? If if they if if two if if, if a pair of a pair of young people, uh, 18 and, and 21, want to fly together as a team, they would fly in B division. As a as a team, if if an A division, if a 14-year-old wants to fly with a with an 18-year-old, they would fly in B division because the teams fly in the division of the oldest member. Okay. Yeah. I have a slight problem with the age zero. You know, I have a slight problem yeah. with the age zero in a, in a parent that has uh, an 18-month-old that barely knows how to stick the igniter in the rocket, but yet the right. parent <laughs> built the rocket for the kid. You know, and uh, where, where do we find, is, is the kid inept enough and, and smart enough to do everything himself to build a rocket and fly himself? What age should that really be? 18 months, three years, four or five years? I mean, should there really be an age that, you know? Well, I want to say again, age divisions, the A division used to be zero before this particular situation occurred historically that created an older age cutoff in, age, in A division. What that situation was. What do you think about? But, 
You mm -hmm. pretty much described it. Yeah. yeah. He was asking, what was that reason? You can imagine what the reason I was. I know what the reason is. There's no need to discuss that. I know. So, but, but, but what I want to say is this, and we're going to get to this later in the show, but what it boils down to is this. How many people here right now want to raise their hand and say, I have plans to cheat? I mean, come on, who's going to cheat? I want to know. Because if we can't trust each other, then there isn't going to be somebody flying an 18-month-year-old. It's not going to happen. If a parent wants to team up with their son or daughter, or wants to ha help that son or daughter, if they're five years old, fly, there are ready-to-fly rockets that they can legitimately and, and fairly help their five-year-old fly, however. Would you not agree? Okay. Yeah. And, and I suppose. Yeah. And also, you, you would hope that in those conditions that the parent or other <coughs> sibling decides to bring them on as a team and it's a mentoring situation. And as a team, if you've got a four-year-old out there flying with a 14-year-old and there is a team, what's illegitimate about that? No, so I'm this not talking about team, I'm talking about, <coughs> you're not talking about a one-year-old that out here is well, what, we're, what I'm we saying is, ready to fly rocket, I we, would, we would hope, Dave, that the parent would then say they're part of my team and they're actually in the division. Okay. You see what it, I think I can fix this for you. The old system, there was an incentive to do things like that because there were points collected in the national championship. Yeah, the points are gone. There is no incentive anymore to play games with stuff like that. The, the reason that the age cut off was put in place was out of a gaming situation that had occurred because of what Bob is saying. An alleged gaming situation. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> <Let's move laughs> right along. Let's. Okay. Uh, do you follow my? So, with no points to accrue, the incentive is gone. I mean, it doesn't mean that there isn't an incentive to want to do well in the NRC, depending on what your goals are, being a national champion or whatever. But I don't think there. There's likely to ever be a you know a three-year-old national champion. The system isn't going to function that way. But you might have a three-year-old who likes flying rockets because it, precisely. Dad, when if, oh, if, it, if a problem arises, maybe you should worry about that and deal with it. There you go. Yeah. And that's what regional yeah. contest chairs were for too. Doesn't exactly. matter. Regional yeah. chairs are out there and the contest directors. It's, right. There's, there's I mean, safety mechanisms yes. in the system. Correct. Yeah, yeah. If, if we have powerful reason to think somebody is trying to cheat or then we, we want to be honest, mistakes right. are out here, let's deal with it because we want to be honest people, but not sweat too much. All right. The three simple steps to competing in the NRC. So you would go to the home page. We all know where contest flying is. Eventually, there will be a link there that says sanction an NRC launch or, or, or record trial. Currently, the, lo the link says, you know, to register an NAR launch. And there's, there's a form there. I think many of you are familiar with it, which is where you provide your information in order to go get your launch put on the NAR launch calendar. So. Your members know where you're, what's going on, and others can potentially find your event. Um, so that link's not active yet? No, the link is active. That it, link? That link is not active. That, that link is, that's, that's what I'm hoping it will eventually say, because unfortunately, I don't know the magic Pixie Ducks HTML language to go in there and muck with WordPress and make it say what I'd like it to say now. I have to go through the channels and that takes time. So it will. Chris is, Chris is Dr. Kidwell has been working hard on all of these issues. But it will say that. But you can go and quote sanction an RC launch right now. Trip Matt asked me about that earlier this week and I told him you can go there and you can you can sanction an NRC launch right now. It's by it's going like, to register a launch and then doing all the additional stuff you need to do. Right. And there's and there is a in that pull down menu of things you can select, there's one that says NRC okay. for NRC launch. So thank you. The the registration process 
used to be for 21 years or basically senior divisions or older, it's now 18 years of age or older, can sanction an NRC launch. So once that is done with all this, I can give a live demo of the new pages on the website to show you the workflow of how to register a contest, how to enter <coughs> all that kind of stuff. And the person who registers the launch or sanctions the launch becomes the contest director. What's important to note about that is under the NRC, when you get together and, and fly the event, people, of course, they'll have, they'll have um, flight cards and they'll have entry forms. And you'll still collect those and that is still the information that will go into contest manager and that is still data that will go back to your regional contest chair, ultimately for verification of the score that goes up on the scoreboard. Because, you know, Bunny, if you sanction a launch and a few of you get together and fly some NRC events, again, you'll collect that information, you'll put it into contest manager, you'll go to the scoreboard and as the contest director you'll point you'll push up the results for those people who flew to the scoreboard in their respective divisions because you're the one who sanctioned the launch <coughs> you're the contest dude and then you'll fire off your contest manager file electronically to the regional contest chair and then he'll go on the contest board and he'll open up your contest manager file and he'll look at the scoreboard and go yeah all those scores match the data I got in that contest manager. In other words, you didn't make a typo on your end, inflate or deflate somebody's score in them. You know, so that's the checks and balance, and once that occurs... Is the paperwork still going back? There's no paperwork. Okay. You keep paperwork. You keep paperwork. It's all electronic. No more paper. Right. No more signatures either. Right. So no when the regional contest board chairman is looking at a contest manager file, how does he know that it's... What is he verifying that file against? He's verifying the, the, scoreboard. the scoreboard result. Mark Bundick flew 300 seconds in eight streamer duration against the contest manager file that says Mark Bundick flew 30 seconds in eight streamer. Oh, I guess we got a, a zero added there on the scoreboard. <clears throat> I wonder why that happened. This contest manager file says only 30. So he'll either check back with you or at least he won't necessarily verify that 300 seconds that's up there because so doing, it's a conflict. I'm doing the data entry twice. Okay. We're, we're working on it. Doing the, 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 the end goal is you upload the contest manager file and it can do that as, as one of the options. Yes, Chris? Yes. yes. So you, you do it once in contest manager and you upload the contest manager file and that'll do the posting. We're not there yet. Okay, I understand. I'm trying, you know, we have a launch coming up in August. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've indicated to you in the past that I'm willing to promote this activity as a way to get it off the ground because you know it might be interesting for our club to fly some contests. Right. Um, so I'm trying to make sure I understand the mechanics so I'm not screwing around with this when we get ready to do it, right? I understand. Yeah, you, um, you, you're all who are going to do it in the next couple months, Bunny, August. Um, Glenn has one happening uh, yep. at the end of August and so forth. I'm sorry, you're going to be some guinea pigs, okay? You're going to, you're going to okay. find a bunch. You're I don't mind that. I'm happy to do that. You know, as long as I know, right? Yeah. That's, sure. That's going to go on, right? yeah. and, and you'll have us to call and say, hey, you know, it's not working. Could you help us out? Well, I, I have your email. <laughs> <laughs> Mark? Does, Mike? Yeah, does, con does Contest Manager, what platforms does it actually run on right now? Anything that runs Java. Java. Well, this guy or not? Does it run Java? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if, 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 if it goes with a tablet, it's a lot easier to have a tablet on the field than a Is it an Apple? It's an Apple. Yeah, it has Java no. Nintendo. What? No. No, I mean, but if, if, if it could, it'd be a lot easier to do data entry with one of these than have to have a PC out on the field. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. You want to help write a copy in person? I'm just... just Roger? Yeah, it just sounds like um, Mark was talking, initially he's talking about having the dual data entry, and he said, oh, no, you have load contest management. <clears throat> You're saying the dual data entry is going to allow the contest group, uh, the regional contest uh, director, to compare and make sure that there. Sounds like you suddenly lost that. You have one data entry, but you have no reference back to the original source for any 
everybody who was doing quality insurance. That was lost 12 or 14 years ago. There's not been a requirement to send flight cards in for about 12 or 14 years. Yeah, it's it's been inconsistently done that way. A lot of CDs just just mail off all the contest forms yeah. anyway. But we've not we've not required that for for several years. Um, we, we do push that responsibility to the CD to hey, yeah. just do the paperwork correctly. Um, the checks we're doing is just make sure there's no egregious uh, errors uh, or double counting or, or that sort of thing. So I'll end this slide with there is no limit to the number of NRC launches an 18 year an 18 year old or older member may sanction in the course of an NRC year. So from this year August 5th until next June 30th it's it's only limited by your desire to go and fly your available time uh, and a second person a minimum of a second NAR person to fly with if you're unless you're under the age of 18 in which case that second person needs to be at least 18 years of age or older. Mike? Does that mean that you're, you're, you're timing your own? If you only have two people and you're timing your own? Yeah. No, no that's why there's two people. You only need one time. Oh, it's, it's you and two people? You only no, 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 no. You and one other person one and if it's your flight he's timing for you and when his duration flight comes you're timing for him. The second person is RSO, check-in, returns, timing, altimeter reading. <laughs> Chief Cook and Bottle yeah, Watch. The timing, <laughs> but you, you, in that no case, you don't have There's no limit to the number of launches you could do it a day? No, right. it's right. no. absolutely. Well, exactly. there's no limit to the number of, uh, uh, there's no limit to flying one or up to the six events. Remember, you are flying a, a like a micro contest. When you fly, when, when you fly half APD, do you go out to the range right now and fly as many attempts and then pick out the one that you like? No, you get two attempts, the sum of which is your score, and that's what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. If, if you had another person, you could do two timers. Yes. Oh, that's sure. easier to get a, a, sure. a time. Right. Sure. But but the rules have never required two timers. It's always it's always allowed a single timer. It's just been practiced. The second one didn't work for some reason. That's the reason. Well, sure. So if you only have two people, you're, 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 you're okay. take that risk, yeah. Always used to require two, but they had to go out. Flyer events. So your launch day arrives, you fly your NRC events per the current rule book. Again, launch may be held with as few as two members, where one of the two competitors is 18 years of age or older. Teams are treated, teams are treated as though they were a single individual. So in the case of, say, you know, Alan, Buzz, and Mark, if they want to go out and fly some NRC events, unfortunately, you guys are going to have to find actually a fourth person if you were going to show up as a team of three because you do actually represent one individual in the grand scheme of all this. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. And the NRC launch is a competition. If nothing else, you are, at that moment, you are competing against yourself, but in the grander scheme, you're competing against everybody in your division, because when you go back and put that score up on the scoreboard, that's when you see the result of your flying on that particular day, assuming, of course, that day's result was better than the last time you flew, because the scoreboard's only going to keep track of your best result. Okay, so at any NRC launch, all NRC events are permitted to be flown. So, Mike, for instance, if, if you and a friend go out to fly, uh, some uh, sanction an NRC launch, and your intent is only to fly two of the events. But if somebody else in your section goes, oh, look, I see on the launch calendar, Mike sanctioned an NRC launch for our field this weekend, and you put in your launch events, oh, they're going to fly half APD and uh, C Egloff altitude, but I want to fly, uh, I want to fly the A rocket glide, and I want to fly something else you know, that's in the NRC selected events. They can show up under your sanction, and they can make those flights. You're, you're allowing that by the very fact that you sanctioned the launch. Okay? And then you just work amongst yourselves as to who gets to time, and who gets to verify an altimeter reading, and that sort of thing. So there are no events at an NRC launch. An NRC launch is by definition all the events. It is by definition all the events. You're allowing any of them. Correct. So that's 
any power class for any event. No, 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 no. The six no, selected the, ones. The, you're allowing the events is that six that I showed earlier, and those all have a specific that were chosen for this new inaugural year, like sea egg loft so, altitude. It's just a sea engine. So I can't do a, a launch of another event that's one of the NRC events potentially. No, you can do the ones that are listed. You can do the ones, the six that are listed that are picked that are out, listed. that are selected for the for, that the, year. for the contest year. So I can't say that my field, my, I, my field can't do a X, but I would still like to do an egg log. <coughs> right here. That's for fun. Fun. Is that just then for fun? No, 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 what we're saying is if, if the NRC event is C egg off altitude, they're not allowed to hold B egg off altitude at all? No. Well, they can fly B egg off altitude, but it's a non NRC event. It just won't show up on the scoreboard. It just won't show up on the scoreboard. Right. You're not going to run leaderboards for this. For this, this is actually a separate question. Yeah. This is, this is, the, this is the, the one we've talked about a couple of times. If you want to hold a contest, Similar to an old regional style, and I can tell you our Pittsburgh group is going to do it because we aren't giving up on it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> fly what you want. But if you sanction it and people show up and say, I need to fly my sea egg law, you sanctioned it. They're going to fly that event, and you're going to help turn in the results for it. But your events are your events. You want to give trophies for that, awards for that? Please do. Fly G Super Rock, man, and give a word to it. Yeah, G Super Rock. Okay, then, okay, but, but then at NARA, yes. there will be the six events. Yes, yeah, that's correct. The six, right? Six, the six, six events. Six. So Plus. the other, how many? Could be, well, a really big NARA is 11 events. So maybe ten, five ten, more ten, events. 10, 11, eight, yep, nine, yep. 10, 11, something right? like that. Nine, 10, the 11. Those open. other events, the other three, four, or five, right, can be. Anything? Yeah, yeah. the contest yeah. director can make them anything he wants. So if you want to do G uh, helicopter, yeah. G super rock, yeah, you can do it. Yes. Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could. Yeah. Oh, and so the events that are in the pink yes. book now. <laughs> yes. The, the current it's slate of all those we all, all the events are all still there. They're yeah. all still there. They just don't have the weighting factor stuff. Right. That's yeah. correct. Right. The rules the same? Yes. That's never been clear. The, 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 <laughs> only, the only thing we changed relative to an event was the, um, the payload, the NAR payload. Yeah. They used to, force, it used to force you to use a 19 millimeter tube to encapsulate it. We made it small enough so it now fits in BT-20. Okay, so that's a, just a, a coupler or BT-20. Right. right. That's, that's the only thing we did that you might say created a different, well, it didn't create a different event, but it, it changed some of the nature of that event. But otherwise, all the events are there. We removed, what, just the three of those, correct? There's five. Which ones? Super scale, yeah. space oh. systems, oh. mentor ship, drag race, and rear control glide. Yeah. Those five are gone. Those are the five events that are no longer they aren't flown in anyway. What was the middle one? Space mentor systems, ship. super scale, yeah. Drag race, race mentorship, mentorship, and our radio control glider. And radio, yeah, precision radio control glider. Oh. Those are the five events that are no longer in the sport. Dead. We retired them. That we were. Yeah. I'm sorry. What's mentorship? What is mentorship? What mentorship? Mentorship. Before, before radio control rocket glider. Drag race. Drag race. Drag race. Drag race. Space, space systems and super scale. Yeah, space systems and super scale. scale. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. What's the next one? Mentorship and Mentor radio show. Don't know. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Getting nose in the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting nose in the book. Yeah. <laughs> Getting nose in the book. Yeah. It was created. It was created by the board two years ago. It was created by Ted Cochran a couple of years ago just to try it out. Yeah, if you have to mentor somebody in the event in order to place in the event. Something that you should really, really clarify on everything you do from now on, because I and apparently many other people were under the direct impression that the Pink Book and all of Contest Rock really was summarily destroyed and this was the new thing. Nobody ever said that. But that's what was appeared to have been implied. That's what I thought. A lot of people thought that. Well, maybe you should it's clarify that. I don't read Croc too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't read Croc. I don't know. We've been, we've been, Chris, 
have you missed any uh, any of the last previous two narrows? I reported them all. Okay. And that was never made clear. Uh, 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 <laughs> but you were there, and I never, you know, there was never anything that said that, you know, the. the the events were being all thrown out and replaced. Sure there was. Even the, the fun event this week was Rest in Peace Pink Book. <laughs> Moving on. Moving right along. At the conclusion of your NRC launch, the contest director has seven days in which to post the unofficial scores. Note they're called unofficial because the contest board chair has not yet received your contest manager file. To post your unofficial scores to the online scoreboard for each of the competitors that flew. At which point, uh, hopefully you'll do it much faster than seven days. But we picked an arbitrary number, I guess. One that seemed to get your results up on the scoreboard so you can see where you stand as quickly within a reasonable amount of time. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. So hopefully you'll do it in a matter of 48 hours. Dan? What do I do, or what happens if somebody doesn't comply with the seven-day rule? Well, you well, know, the, the, the previous book book had lanky. <laughs> so far, that's been my only strategy. That's what I <laughs> Very good. Mike? Is there any provision for doing it on paper rather than oh, electronically? Right. If something goes completely could I send in somehow my results on in paper to the contest director? Mike, you can, you can always talk to your regional chair and say, yeah. Dan, I don't, I don't know what region you're in, you know, whoever it is, Dan, can you please help me out? I have this problem. And, you know, yeah. we're, we're not, we're not just, all, I, I, all, I, I just, just, you know, we're, we're people. In case bad things happen. <laughs> but having said that, come on, guys, you know, Libraries have free computing services. If you if you have to get a computer at the library, a friend, you can do it. It's, Someone's it's, smartphone. It's not that hard these days. Okay. So the scoreboard will only display a competitor's best score in any event, at any time, and the, mm. the scores become official again. The CD submits <coughs> the contest manager file to the regional contest board chair for verification. So it's envisioned that there would be both unofficial and official scores displayed in the scoreboard? Asterisks. Okay. Yes. Yep. The NRC is one big contest. So I think what I get very excited about is the idea that at any time in the course of my flying this, is I'm going to have scores in those events that I'm wanting to fly, and I'm going to get to see where I am relative to everybody that is my competition. And that doesn't exist today. At least, not with the speed which, with, uh, which, with, with, with which, this will provide. Sorry. All right. Uh, each time you fly an NRC launch, you are competing with everyone in your competition division in an effort to improve your rank. Subsequently, maybe improve your bragging rights at that moment in time before you get to Nerim and then you get beat down. <laughs> If your intent is to seek an event, uh, an event specialist award or a national championship at NARAM, then improving your performance and achieving a top 10 rank in the events is what you're really trying to focus on. Performance becomes very important if you want those levels of recognition. <coughs> Many more contests and opportunities and possibilities. A sanctioned contest simply means NRC events are either part of the contest or that the CD is allowing NRC competitors access to their launch to make NRC flights. Record trials are the only other thing that is sanctioned other than an NRC launch or NARA. There are only three forms of a sanction. An NRC event may be flown at a, at a sanctioned contest regardless of the other event's schedule. I think that's, that's what Scott was describing to you earlier. Sections may hold NRC sanctioned launches, unsanctioned contests, or sanctioned contests with NRC as often as they want. This, is, this has been one of the sticking points that we want, we really hope everybody gets. Everyone was worried about the fact that, well, under this format, what's our section supposed to do? We used to fly regionals. A regional was simply a way of saying you held a contest, 
it had a value in form of points. And beyond that, it was finding out who was best, ranking people in their performances in, in whatever events you chose. The only thing that got thrown out of that equation was the points. If you want to have a contest, of an all a two-day regional contest with other sections in your area, hold it. Set up the set up the events, bring those other competitors in. The only thing that's not there are points, and award the best flyers. There's no difference. If you have NRC events as a part of that, then if you sanction it, then others may show up who want to fly NRC events. It's the only that's the only catch. If you sanction your contest, then you're allowing NRC to take place. Any of the six, all of the six. But if you want to hold a contest and you want to call it a regional, there's nothing to say you can't use that word. And you don't want any and you don't want NRC involved, all you do is not sanction it. And then you could fly, you could still fly C egg loft altitude, even though it's an NRC event this year. Mark, you look puzzled. No, I'm not okay. puzzled at all. All right. So don't stop having the inner rivalries. There's no reason for Ekram to die or any of the other long storied competitions that we're all familiar with. They should keep going forward. Crown your champions. So if I sanction the contest, <coughs> yes, and I'm not intending to fly an egg walk. I have to supply eggs. Regardless. <laughs> We're getting to that, Mike. Hang in with me. Okay. Hang in with me. We're getting there. So, unsanctioned contests may include as few or as many non-NRC events as they wish. This is another upside, in my opinion. Before you wanted to hold a contest, most people would go to the back of the pink book. They'd look up what the maximum weighting factor was for local, open yeah, section, regional meet, yeah, we'll and then you'd have to work the math and fudge it around until you got the maximum points. If your section wants to just do fun and something new and interesting, you can hold a contest now, and you can use events you've made up. You can go into the old pink book and pull super scale out, please do, <laughs> and fly that. But if you only want to fly three events or you want to fly 30 events, you can fly whatever you want to fly. The point is get out and fly. Contest things. I mean, that's, that's why we're here this week. And I, yep. I, I have a point. I, guess, um, I have to talk a little bit about the thing about if you sanction you don't have to allow any NRC event. Because we have a special situation where a guard is flying field. FAA will not allow us to exceed a thousand feet. Okay. And that means that certain of the NRC events we cannot fly. If that means we can't change the contest, that shuts down competition and so forth. How would they your local safety thing has to be any type even now? How would they enforce that? Yeah, how are they looking um, at it's, it? Mark, it's a special situation, but basically they made a series of demands and we basically said yes. So, so, so you're in California, you don't count as another country. <laughs> so, wait, one, one moment. Okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack this from another point of view, though. So, what event's going to break your thousand feet? A altitude. And who said A altitude had to be ultimate performance? I mean, if I, if you say we're going to fly A altitude, if we're flying high power and the wave is 3,000 feet, you're going to blow through it to 4,000? I don't think so. Yeah, if we right. know that we can't fly A altitude beyond 1,000 feet, I guess it becomes set altitude. <laughs> yeah, but it's a leader point. It makes it useless. Um, if, 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 that's if that's one deal, though, right? That's just one deal. Yeah, that's our only deal. Well, that means competitors so should we'll know better than to show up and fly A altitude I, there. Yeah, Lynn. <laughs> Is it possible to incorporate some some form of ground rules because of field limitations? Yeah. No. You know, that, all I can say right now is we have the we have the book the way we have it, and we couldn't foresee every possibility. I. But you know, Karnak darting with Johnny Carson. My my mind reading skills are gone. <laughs> it's, a, it's a corner case, I admit, but you know it's a real corner. No, case. I, I don't deny that. You, that you that's only true. Need the phrase subject to local flying field restrictions, which should be published when the contest is announced. Correct. And, and would that not address that issue? Don't go there. 
This is the kind of thing that can be figured out. It, yeah, I'm not trying to say, you know, we don't want you holding contests because no, we don't we want to risk that you know, situation going on. So, so that, that can be dealt with. Um, between now and when we figure out how to, how to finesse the point, just talk to your folks and say, look, here's the reality. We can't break a thousand foot. Don't try to find, fly your A altitude here, please. Yeah, okay? I mean, I, do. I just want to make sure that you're, you know, the structure allows that because right. you know, we'll have right. to do it. Um, I think if, if we go back into the, the safety rules of the NAR, the RSO has the final say on any, on any flight from safety or local ordinances. If local ordinance says he can't fly it, that means the RSO is allowed to say that, 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 that's, that's fine. That's fine. And it's a problem with that need for a solution. You must. You, you are holding the event, and you are allowed to fly the event. But the safety limits of your field seat you can't fly over a thousand feet. And so if the RSO says that looks like we'll fly over a thousand feet, it is within your right. rights to say that you can't fly yes. that. You, you can yes. fly the event, you cannot fly that rocket. Well, I, I mean, I get that. I mean, it just fine. Fine. I don't look more yeah. I just yeah. put in the announcement that says, look, you know, it will not be helpful to fly at any altitude here because you had the same problem with Apogee 10 fives in your state. You couldn't fly because they weren't CF, they have SAM, whatever certified. Okay. Same issues yeah. happened back then with those. So. All right, moving on. More exciting there. <laughs> well, I certainly think it's going to be. The Aram competition, of course, will be open to all registered flyers in, in, in attendance. NARAM consists of the NRC events, the six events we saw earlier, and whatever other events the contest director selects from the sporting code. Competitors who wish to be a national champion or receive an event specialist award recognition must meet the NRC qualification requirements and declare their intentions when they register for NARAM. So, you know, when you get your the online registration process or a written registration process for NARAM, it will simply be a point at where you're, you're being asked, what's your intent for here is to fly for a national championship? Well, we'll know if you've checked that box off because we're going to be looking at the results of the NRC and it's going to tell us if you're, if you qualified or not. Same goes for an ESA, at which point <coughs> we, we know who's flying for what. So hold it. Sorry. Yep. Back up. Yep. So, any NAR member could enter the NARAM. Yep. Right? And when I fill out my form, am I declaring one or the other? You could. You could fly for national champion ESAs if you qualify yep. for that. Yeah, if you. Okay, and then so, so I, the, the NRC qualification was top 10, right? Yep. Or 10%. Based qualification. on score, based on rank, yes. Well, okay, but what's the national champion qualification? I'm getting to it. Okay, I've got to that problem. See you I, You will. Okay. And we have a points matrix for use at, at well, we developed this for NARAM, but we want to point out, for those of you who want to hold contests, you can use this scoring matrix in order to help you award performance and determine your winners. Meet James. Meet James. Meet James, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Be regional. Yep. Meaning, that was winners, meaning winners of the contest? Right. Yeah. 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 But it's not just first, <coughs> second, third, fourth flight points. Right. right. First through tenth flight points. Formula One. I don't think Formula One. Okay. Yeah. I thought those numbers. Looks more like NASCAR now. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. NARA will recognize the top 10 competitors in each of the NRC events at the close of the NRC year. That's one thing that um, we will start, that, that we're doing in order to begin again, recognizing competitive performance. Um, we thought from the beginning there simply wasn't enough, you might say, award recognition. You, you typically, you would go to NARAM and a few tables would have everything and a lot of people didn't have anything. And we're going to try and recognize more of the flight performance that occurs throughout the, the NRC year as well as that at NARAM. Event Specialist Awards will recognize the best NRC event performance in each competition division. 
over the course of the NRC year. National champion reserve uh, and reserve will recognize the best overall performance in each competition division over the course of the year. And all NARAM attendees may compete for meet awards, champion, reserve, and events. So before, typically, the person winning the national championship tended to go home with the meet championship as well. Part of the problem, again, in that everything seemed to collect in a few places at the banquet. That's not going to happen. If you declare you want to be the national champion, you're going to have to be satisfied with that one big gleaming trophy. The meet champion award won't be yours. That's going to go to somebody else. Because they will flow extremely well. Yes, Sean? So basically what it comes down to is if you're flying and for the event specialist award, which now qualifies you to compete for the national champion, right? No. No, the event specialist award is its own separate award. Pre narrow. Okay, so if you're competing then for the national champion, you now disqualify yourself for competing for meet champion. That is correct. No double dipping. Right. Okay. Correct. Right. Because because we wanted a way for 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 we wanted people who may not even have an opportunity to be involved. Oh much if at all in the NRC because this means even a walk-on, someone that can has never been champion. on the NRC scoreboard the entire year can come into NARAM because as you're about to find out, NARAM starts at zero points. There's Everybody's on a level playing field. Think, think of it this way. Let's say there's 50 people that registered to compete at NARAM 60, all right? Let's say the top 10 in C Division, all 10 of them show up. So you have 50 people competing. 10 people's points go into the national championship database, the other 40 go into the meet database. You can't double dip, so champ, national champ this side, meet this side. So you use one or the other, but never both anymore. They're concurrent races. So, yeah. Yeah. Pam? But, so when you're uh, flying for a national championship, right? you made that, made that choice, Yep. you can or cannot win an ESA also. You, you can if you've qualified within the ESA. So you can ESA. double dip there, but just right. not meet a national. Correct. Okay. Mike? So, it, you said that passing 10. The top 10 people can or qualify for the this? the top 10 or 10%. If you get Whichever's uh, bigger? Based. Whichever's bigger. Yeah, whichever's All bigger. More so more I'm more sitting more at last spot. I, I am on the boat. And I have made my arrangements to go to NARA, say in May, okay. and I get bumped off. Are you competing for the national championship? Well, I have to put it in when I say if I'm going to NARA, if I am or not. You would know probably based... Well, if, if I'm on the boat, you could, you could get bumped off the whole system after you've actually made the arrangements to go. Did we take that declaration part? That, that it's so June 29th. I don't I think I, I think I asked for this earlier. Is I was thinking it why why not have a way. minimum performance level? Set something like half of the multi-round duration round. There is, if you get above that, there is a, there is there a is. mechanism for that. Yep. There it's is done. a mechanism for that. See, that would, that would seem to make more sense than just, am I ranked in the top, whatever. So if that extends down, it's like they do in, in golf. I mean, it's the top, the top, however many, plus anybody within 50, 50 strokes of the, or 10 strokes of the top guy, which can expand the field. It's just there, an idea. There, there, is, there is a mechanism for that. Uh, and we kind of, it's the, the NRC, max rule there is auto qualifier rank one auto one right? yeah it's an automatic first place tie it's basically based on the equivalent of getting a triple max so for example half a parachute duration is what 60 actually all the all all for the duration of next year are six minutes or six minutes so if you can get two flights of six minutes at any of the four duration events Parachute, streamer, helicopter, boost butt, you will get an auto qualify of one. You're and done, you're done flying that event for the year. So if you get that qualification of six minutes in September in any event, 
you're right, you won. You don't have to keep flying and trying to prove you can. But this, this then, there's, I mean, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but there's no, no return requirements? No return. Correct. Right, under the NRC, there's no return requirement. For duration. For duration. For duration. Right. Well, for, for, for duration events that don't involve eggs or payloads. Well, there's no payload Out for eggs. I mean, what about what about it narrow? There is, yeah. There is a return. The rule is back on for now. Yep. Just like it is now. Strategic. It's suspended during the regular season to try and love as close as we can get to love. Right. <laughs> Let me just understand here. What you're doing is explaining what has been approved and the way it's going to be for the coming year. That's correct. So good ideas and suggestions about what would be better aren't going to go into the system right now. They're nope. not going to be considered. It's the, the die is cast. For the that is correct. This is, this is all boiled. So if you've got good ideas, keep feeding them dead. Yeah. But you don't need to debate it a whole lot because he's well, going to tell you what the lay of the land is for the coming year. I know, but is there a mechanism then to make changes as competitor? For July well, 2018, there, yes. There will. For next season, yes. Basically, what we're hoping you will do is fly the stuff, find out what's working, what's not working. We don't want to, I don't like this, send an email. That does us no good. If you fly it and you're seeing the issues, like, this just isn't working. Let Ed know so we can get this incorporated for the next season. You know, the, you know, stuff like that. We're going to find little things that we need to I, I, Mike, are you familiar with the R, RCP process? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the board suspended the RCP process indefinitely. Why did we do that? Because at the very least, there can't be an RCP, RCP process this fall when you haven't even used the, the, the rule book for a month, two months. Will it be put put in? Oh yeah, back? it'll be back. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it's going to be back and it will be improved. But having said that, it's going to be back. But you need an opportunity to use the book as it currently exists to find those things that you're finding that you want to notify us. Keep track of this. You know, feed all that stuff to me. Well, and, and not, not just that. Any of the yeah. any of the members of the, his committee, so yeah. Like, yeah, also the regional conference. Board. If if something shows up that I mean, you you've done all the work on it. Something <laughs> is broken that we don't we don't anticipate. Is there a mechanism to fix that during this contest year, or we just have to live with it? I have no idea if anything is broken. It, it, it's no. unlikely, Mike, but let us cross that bridge. Yeah, okay. Just, yeah. Yeah. In fact, it would have fallen under two different sets of rules, so. Yeah, that, that's why we don't want to do this. Right, right. Yeah, dangerous. Right. There's another reason to not mess with it, and that's to get past the, I don't like this because I'm not used to it. Yeah, yeah, right. Because the second yeah. or third time, you might right. decide, oh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. If five or six different NRCs in one region are finding the same issue occurring, there's a problem. And that's what we're trying to generate and figure out. If one person just keeps complaining about the same thing, everybody across the country is going, we don't have any issues with that, then you got to kind of look a little further and go, well, what's going on here? <laughs> the one thing to keep in mind in NARA, because of the fact that this is all going to be started at zero points, you're going to have people flying for different reasons, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting blend of, of, of possible outcomes. The, winning an ESA award, as it states, you know, you're going you're gonna to pick an event. Now, I, I know I'm very interested in sea egg loft altitude, for instance, in the, in, in the coming year. So I'm going to be flying that under the NRC, and I'm going to be trying to post good qualified flights, and I want to wind up in the top 10 or top 10 percent, whichever is greater, of that event by the end of the NRC year. And then I'm going to go to NARAM, and then I'm going to want to do as well as possible in that event, knowing that I'm going to be flying against people that want to be national champions. They may be walk-ons from nowhere that simply want to fly egg loft, and who knows? There might be somebody I'd never expected hits a magic motor and smokes everybody. But the bottom line is, I simply need to be the best NRC qualified individual for these reasons I need to finish highest in that in sea egg loft altitude to stand the best opportunity to win that event. That doesn't mean I'm first in sea egg loft, 
I could be fifth in Sieg Law, but I could be fifth and still win it because I was the best, I was the, I was the most highly qualified individual under the NRC prior to NARA. Hmm? So basically you're declaring for the event before NARA and then, you know, assuming you qualify, you have to try to beat all the other people who declare. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, again, the point is, there's got to be a, I think if there isn't a bar to jump, why would we try, why, what's the point in trying hard? No. Sean? I think I see one of the points of confusion here, and I'm going to try to clarify. Okay. The 10% that go in there and they can qualify for these, the specialist positions. Right. The 10% is based on the national leaderboard, not on who's going in there. Correct. So you cannot be bumped off, you can't jump on when you go to NARAM except before you can jump. Except before you can sign up. No. I reserve my hotel room in January. That leaves five months of competition to go. Yeah, the board, the, the, the leaderboard is running up to June 30th. I hope you're not waiting to register for NARAM until, yeah, after June 30th. Uh, I don't know. So, not, not so much that it's set, but you. So, ESA is basically the current year plus meet champion score. I, I think I said that fully. So, may I try again? Sure. So, when you go, if, if you know you're in that top 10% as of June 30th, that's when the year ends, right? Or, or is it a certain. Amount of time before the narrow of that year? <coughs> June 30th. June 30th. Okay. June 30th. Last day you comply for the board. Okay. And so at that point, as you're making the decision to go narrow, you know whether or not you qualify to be flying for an ESA at when you go to Right. Oh, I don't see how that's a different than now. I mean, the last official points list was July 26th this year. Okay. <laughs> and most years, it's barely, you know, two weeks before narrow. I think most of you have decided to go to NARAM regardless of knowing those final points. So I don't see how this is any different. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I mean, we're in the same position we've always been. Yep. Okay. I mean, we're coming here, we're ever to come here to compete, but we're coming here to have fun and meet everybody for the yearly hangout. So. I <laughs> Tom? So people are competing and getting in the top 10. Or 10%. Right. Yep. Around the country. Yep. Right. Yep. Some of them may have no intention of coming in there. That's a possibility. So, but the only ones that can compete at NARAM are in there, <coughs> even if all the no. other people aren't coming? No. You don't have to fly a single NRC event at all? No. If you want to be a, a, a specialist, though, yeah. you have to be one of those top ten, over then. Um, otherwise you can't at NARAM. I mean, right. so if there's a section of, you know, like Pikes Peak, whatever, high altitude, kick everybody off so nobody possibly <laughs> can get into NARAM at this event, you know, because our field is wonderful or something, you know, they could prevent anybody from getting that or yeah, severely yeah. limited. It's limited conceivable. It's conceivable. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of conceivable. For all the bridge we come to, I think. I think you're saying it's conceivable. Yeah, we're talking about it. Okay. All right. Right. Maybe that's okay. So winning a national championship. At the close of the NRC year, June 30th, competitor scores in the scoreboard become final. Final scores determine a competitor's rank. In each of the NRC events they flew, a first place in any NRC event equals a rank of one. It's pretty straightforward. Second place is a rank of two. For competitors seeking a national champion award, the qualifying process hinges on a competitor's combined scoreboard rank resulting from flying all six NRC events. Therefore, in theory, a perfect NRC score is a combined rank of six. You would be in first place in all six events at the end of the NRC year and your scoreboard rank would be six. I think that's straightforward enough, but it's not likely that's going to be the case. I mean, there's going to be there's going to be a mix of finishing positions, 
but it is all going to come down to whatever that combined rank is. You know, here, Rick G, we know who that is, don't we, Bob? You know, <laughs> there, there are his six scores and it's good, good results, but, you know, it's a 14. That's a bit far off the pace of a six. But if you, you know, if you shank one of these and have a, you know, a 15th place, you know, your rank's going to drop pretty quickly. So it's obviously going to reward those who take advantage of the system to fly a lot to try and constantly be working to improve those scores. If you want to be a national champion, this system is going to reward those who work hard and fly well. Because honestly, I think it should be hard. Then why? Those scores aren't so, limited to 1 through 10, they can be 27. Yeah. Yep. Or 277. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yep. Don't tank oh, one. <laughs> it's seen about a few. Individuals and teams must post quality. So the, the bottom line is you have to first, individually or as a team, post just a qualified flight. You know, that's, that's the minimum hoop you have to do if you're going to go after a national championship award. And we know all know a qualified flight is. That's not much of a hoop to jump through. At the end of the year, based on their final scoreboard position or rank in each event, the individuals and teams whose combined rank places them in the top 10 or top 10%, whichever is greater, qualify to go to an air and compete for, the, for a national championship. <laughs> Assuming, of course, they intend to go and they declare their intent to be at an Arab and compete for that national championship. NRC qualified competitors accumulating the most points at NARAM shall receive the national champion awards in their competition division. NARAM competitors who want, will want to enter all the events at NARAM because NARAM starts with zero points. And there are, there's a point schedule, you saw it earlier, and all the, all the events will be at our awarded points and added up. So if anybody thinks that NARAM is just about you only win the national championship for the six NRC events, no. They're just six events that are going to form the core of NARAM. There are going to be three to five additional events, and you've got to, you want to fly all of them if you want to be the national champion because they're all scoring points based on that schedule. So the other the events, the non-NRC core events, also count for the national everything. Everything. everything, everything, all the events, just like you're flying so right now, if they, including if they do, scale, geez, including yep. super rocky, yep. you got to yep. do it. Yes. Okay. Mark, you're looking concerned again. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna. So fair play and trust essential. Again, as we wrote this new sporting code, we ran into multiple places where we asked ourselves, how do we protect against this or that? And the only word that came out of it is the trust in our fellow competitors. So I'm sorry, I, when, I, when, I, when I asked the question, who here plans to declare their intent to cheat? And Tripp's eyes and brow furled like, what are you asking these people this question for? I, I understood that it's probably not the, the kind of thing you'd expect to be asked, but. I trust everybody in this room. I would expect everyone would trust me, and that's how this is going to work. It's the only way this is going to work. Is that why sections for decades have been accused of only basement regionals, because we all trust each other? <laughs> I meant that. There, Gary, there was a system before, and this isn't it. And that system occurred. Well, this occurs. is easier, because you only have to find one cohort to cheat. Not a whole set. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of that, however, is that there's less incentive to do so because you can fly half a parachute duration next to a thousand foot blip, and it's probably not really going to do a whole lot for you in terms of what you're trying to achieve, you know, by the end of the month. So it's plus or minus. They're going to whoop your butt. So, you know, when we're flying altitude events, the new the new sporting code states that you're you're going to record launch site temperature. Chris has baked this in, baking this into contest manager. That'll be one of the elements that you know needs to go into generate your altimeter score. Uh, that's <coughs> one area that we've learned from Dan is important in order to help improve the likelihood of accuracy. Is that fair to say, Dan, of the of the result generated by an altimeter? NRC events have no return rule. The return rule is in effect at narrow. So what's up with that? What is up with that? Yeah. What was the rationale for flipping it back in there? 
Well, I think the better way to explain it is why, what's the rationale for removing it prior to NARAM? Because we're all used to it at NARAM, correct? Can swing either way. <laughs> Very good. So I'll swing it to you in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sense that... I'm still waiting for the rationale. Okay, so the rationale is simply this. And it's already been expressed here this evening. I'm flying on a postage stamp field. How am I supposed to effectively compete against those in the far west with big fields? And I'm flying parachute duration. Like Vern here is going to have some big fields. My feeling is if it's in a thermal, and even if it's going off over a tree line, and that tree line might prevent you from getting to the model, but you're going to still see it for six or seven minutes, that may do just as well against a six or seven minute flight out where he is is not necessarily any more or less attainable than you are. But your problem is if you have to return that flight, he's got a better chance. So, but at NARAM it's all equal. But we, we suspend it because we're all going to be on that NARAM field together. Okay, but still, I mean, I'm trying to turn in the best flight performance that I can to beat everybody there. If, if it's valid for me to throw the thing away during the year, I, I guess I don't see why it isn't equally valid to do it in there. But again, I'll, I'll fly whatever rules you got okay. here. And, you know, Very good. Take it down, but now, I, I think the, last, the last paragraph is the twist that might help you with this a little bit. So there are... There are duration events in the sporting code that reference an NRC max. We, ha we know what multi-round maxes are. So if, if for half a parachute duration, the max is 120 seconds, is that right? It doesn't half matter. The, is the pardon me? Half a is 120. Yeah, is 120 seconds. What we're saying is, if the max, if, if, if three flights would generally be 360 seconds, if you can get that 360 seconds mark on two flights, as opposed to three, that's, that's the equivalent of first place under the, in the NRC. What do you do with ties? They're all ready to go. They all go. They all go. This, is, this is for NRC during the regular yeah. season. This is during the NRC season. So you don't necessarily have to try to thermal a couple of ways to right. this off. Think about it. Come to <laughs> Before you go off this one, yeah. all altitude events require on site temperature to be recorded because it's going to be used in event scoring. How is it used in event scoring? There will be a new field added to Contest Manager where you plug in the temperature for each flight, each altitude flight, and it applies a correction factor to. A correction factor? Um, why are, are we going to correct for elevation as well? Uh, no, no. That was discussed. Yeah. Smaller effect. Yeah. No. Is it a smaller effect? Yes, yeah, more small. That was my question. Okay. I didn't like speed. We may get there. We we may have that at some point. <coughs> we'll work with Chris. We'll we'll figure it out. But for now, the consensus is that was less significant than the temperature correction. If that's about that's about the best way I can put it, John. What's the protocol for measuring the temperature? Protocol for measuring the temperature it has to be measured in Celsius. Okay. Um, there is there is no there. If you like, we've we've researched a very inexpensive seven dollar and ninety nine cent you know thermometer reads out in Celsius plus or minus two degree accuracy. Um, we'll be supplying the source for it, and you can buy those if you like. Why Celsius? <laughs> it's not very accurate. It's better system. In, in your day long, in your day long contest that starts the morning at 20 C, and in the afternoon you're over 30. I mean, what temperature do you use? Take it before you're taking it right before flight. the flight, Mike. Right? Every, every, every flight has to yep. record a temperature. Yep. That's correct. Right before like flight. What like accuracy? No. We, we now have a new contest requirement. Can you throw or read digitally? I would suggest it. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd suggest it. Hundredth of a degree? Fair play and trust. Five degrees? The, the, the red column of mercury in the... It's not mercury. Why not? Just we didn't call it out. Just one of those at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> the red column never was like mercury. 
So it starts sanctioning. The NRC year will begin the day after 59 concludes. That's August 5th. And next year we're going to crown these first. We're going to recognize these first champions and event specialist award winners. I, I can only say this. If you don't sit down and really take the time to read through the new sporting code, and I mean, I don't mean just sort of glance your way through it inside of an hour. It's going to take some time to process what's in there. I admit, I've had 22 months of this thing and I'm still processing it, but the more I process it, the more upside I see in it. And that's not just because I sat on this committee and was asked to create this thing. I could have said no, I believe in what we've done. These guys, you know them all, you've flown with them, and they're competitors who also believe in what this can potentially do for competition. And again, we're not the target market. We're hopefully the target market are the, non, the, the members of the NAR who aren't flying competition that may have seen weighting factors and points as just simply too arcane. And young people who don't have to necessarily figure out where am I going to get a special size body tube for this NAR payload because we made that a little simpler. I mean, it, it exists on a lot of different levels. Bob? I'm going to repeat my question from earlier. If you didn't talk to that 97% that hasn't given a damn before, what makes you think they're going to give a damn now? And Bob, yes. did you offer up to me to take that poll? <laughs> no, you didn't. So I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Volunteers. No, um, I, would, I would say that there's an opportunity for us to find out. Why don't you help me find out? by approaching those young people, especially that might not be flying. This, 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 this is a wants private to do five it. person committee that didn't invite other people in. Actually, Ed okay, uh, so contacted a dozen submit, people. I would submit that having data about why people don't fly contests would have been helpful. Given that we don't have it, and given that the contest participation in the NAR is dropping off of a cliff, competition was about to become irrelevant as an NAR activity. And Bob, so short of the plus one, how much competition are you fly? But, but I, one more thing, Ed, right? I don't know whether this is going to work or not, but I right. hope we don't do something. We're AMA free flight. We're a, or worse. Yep. For AMA okay. free flight. So I would encourage people to do two things. I would encourage them to try it, provide that feedback, and then promote it, right? Simply announcing that you did it on the NAR's Facebook page will take you two minutes. If it's not talked up, if it's not kept in front of the membership, nobody else is going to try it. So my intention for our club is to schedule NRC events every launch we have. Thank you, buddy. Dan? I think this is a great opportunity for those of us to mentor uh, TARC teams and finally get a way to get them engaged. Because when I tell them about an art contest, they got to come down the bong and they got to prepare for all these events and you're going to be there all day. You know, they aren't too interested. But if I say, hey, the next time I come out and we, uh, you know, and I uh, witness your car flight, you know, like we could fly some of these other events too. And you can see if you could be getting the top 10 on the website. And I, and the guys I'm to mentoring, I think are was some more so than the previous system. So. I know it's only one data point, Bob, but I, that to me is really convincing because I have been trying to get my TARC team generous to the NARCOM, but the way we have it set up now is just a non-starter. I think that because we're out there regularly with our TARC teams helping them with this other stuff, hey, one of our TARC build sessions, we're building a streamer model at the same time, and the guys on my TARC team are all trying to go out there that day when we fly the TARC rocket and we see who, do, who's, who wins that event. It's a competition between themselves, and then they get to see the name on the scoreboard. That's something we can't get. Into. I was going to ask, no matter what place you're in, 577th, you're going to see your name on the scoreboard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right? Your name's on the scoreboard. And so that kid that's four years old with an RTI, I right. tend to be higher. Exactly. <laughs> he might be the next volunteer in the NAR like Trip Harper. That's right. You never know. Would, would there be a way to email people who are doing the NRC stuff, if there's someone sanctioning a, a competition somewhere near you. I mean, it, 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 right now, right now, I think where it is, it, it comes up, you have to go and look. 
But if you were actually uh -huh. in the NRC system already, yeah, posted on Facebook. If there was some no, that guy's way of pinging to somebody, someone has sanctioned something somewhere, just drop you an email that there's one to go do. Potentially. You've already got an automated there's, system doing all this. Just well, have been notified people. To the we could develop an opt-in mailing list as well, right? And I would submit you wouldn't necessarily need to develop the software that says, "Oh, you're in." Uh, yeah, no, it, you're in. Uh, oh, yeah, you just join that contest in Colorado. There aren't going to be so many of these things, at least in the first year, that you couldn't just get bombarded and go, hey, California, don't there. Um, right? We got a lot of smart people here who can write software. I, it shouldn't be that hard for somebody to come up with something that says you put in your zip code and if it's within a certain number of miles, it'll ping you. Thank you, Dan. Any other questions? Yes. Quick question. About record trials, I think that was wrong. Yep. Yes. Um, is it uh, take the records that are the, the, the six permanent and then the one selected for that year? Or can it be anything? anything. Oh, it's anything. Uh, re record trials are their own, their own special form of competition. And at a record trial, you can, you can fly any NER event in an effort to set a new record based on the records list that's maintained on the NER website. So if, if you saw that, well, I don't know, uh, after today's sea altitude, it's going to be kind of hard to improve on some things for a while. But if, you know, if, if you saw a altitude was you know 400 meters and you think you can fly higher, you hold a records trial. It doesn't have to be anybody else there to fly against it, other than the fact that you want to fly and try and set that new record. Okay. One last question. Yeah. Um, the, the current record list is that going to be retired or no? Well, yeah. Not going to be affected at all. The current record list is going to be retired, I imagine. Every time well, it's, it's, it's not so much a the rules. No, nothing here yeah, it causes it to have to be retired. Yeah. This will be redundant. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we already, we already list records based on whether or not they were like theolite track versus altimeter based. So, depending on, you know, again, going forward, the use of theolites versus altimeters, why? Um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, you'll probably see a lot more activity in record set with the use of altimeters is probably what's more likely to happen. Is there a Because the new sporting code altimeters are now the preferred method of, of tracking, if you will, of, of, of recording uh, alti uh, altitude. But yeah, as, as far as the records trial thing is concerned, I mean, you can, you can now you try, attempt uh, any record you want. Yeah. At a contest. Correct. A sanctioned contest. Correct. So that is correct. A records trial is just not an NRC. It's a records trial. Right. It's if you if you sanction a records trial, you're sanctioning you're basically saying, I want anybody who wants to come and fly for a record, Chris knows about this in particular because Matt flies a record trial almost every kind of like the New Year kickoff event down in the down in the Phoenix area every year. Don? Uh, you had a question that I don't think you actually answered about okay. do you have, are you obliged to provide payloads? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I thought it was earlier than when you thought. You can put it on your own. So you have to be self sufficient. Right. You have to pay everything you need. Yeah. Thanks is the big thing. Where was it? That was early. The answer's no. The answer is the answer is that if you show up to fly eggs, you better bring an egg. If you're going to fly out, yeah. you're going to bring an altimeter. What about the air? Right there. Yeah, come prepared to be self-sufficient. As soon as there'll be no contest for us, like our stop watches. So, yeah, the answer, Don, is people need to come, yeah, self-sufficient. You know, uh, we're used to sanctioning local open regional contests and supplying a lot of things. And the NRC, based on the fact that the common denominator may be as few as two people, you just need to bring all the materials and assume nothing. Now, again, when a, when a launch is sanctioned, an NRC launch is sanctioned, on that current page now, there's a little window where it says, you know, event details, right? And in that event details, you could say, I will have eggs. We're flying Seagull off the altitude altimeter. I'm bringing eggs. You could, and that, you know, that way people might not bring an egg. Uh, you could say, I'll have stop, which is available, nothing else. I mean, you can put in there whatever details, but that's the point. If you 
chose to put in nothing and left it blank other than I'm going to start at 10 a.m. and I'm going to end at 3 p.m. Bring what you need. Bring what you need. How are you going, uh, the, I'm looking at the NARC payload. Yes. Now, are we going to be contacting the NAR and purchasing the payload from you? No. Nope. Or we bring the payload? You, you've always had, it's always been allowed that you can make your own payload to the specifications in the sporting code. But who verifies that? CD. Yeah, Trust the contest, director. So the contest director has to have a scale. A scale, scale and whatever. Right. And the same with the egg. The contest right. director would have to verify the right. weight and the diameter of the egg. No, Stop the vision. Bring your own scale. Yeah. So That's in the scheme of what we, of, of what, scale. That slide where we talk about you know the whole trust issue. If you want if you want to try and game the system by using light eggs or smaller or, or eggs out of diameter or whatever, I mean again there are there are places here where we're simply going to we're going to trust that you will you will meet the requirements of the sporting code when you choose an egg. Uh, in particular, as a good example, or in the use of flying payload. Well, but it's not always a matter of trust. People can make mistakes yeah. measuring something. People can get a freakish result right. from an altimeter. Right. Okay. And suddenly, boom, 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 boom. You have a few of these freak outliers, and and all your real top ten things are pushed, you know, way down on the list. I understand that. that was Well, but if you, it, Thank seems, you. it seems like it's a method for selecting outliers that are going to, you know, that will affect everything centralized. Any, I mean, if some outlier occurs in some little contest, you know, it doesn't affect what goes on. It's the last group group by the regional chair. And if there's questions, then you start going to the CD and say, hey, what happened? And try and figure out what happened. BA block probably didn't go with Alice Tudors. We had a 1,200 meter flight. Back in Dan Wolf knows we call it, and we had the competitor go, That's not right, me. So he took like Matt did an error last year to keep himself out of the event in that flight. Right. It's just simple that. There's no, there's no doubt, VA. there's no doubt, Tom, that one of the things that I know that you're going to need from me or my committee is you're going to need some educational articles to go in the magazine. Yeah, we, we need I, I would have expected some already because this is a I know. And, <laughs> you know, I just couldn't, I haven't yet found it in the hundreds of hours I've already put in with these guys mm -hmm. trying to write this. <laughs> so that's not this you know? And that doesn't even address the number of articles that exist on our website that are impacted by the old sporting code still and those will have to all be rooted out and possibly authors of larger articles might have to be contacted and ask, do you want to update this because if you know it i guess that's going to it's going to fall on me or my committee you know we were just asked to write the sporting code nobody told us about all this other stuff <laughs> but you know what we're just going to assume to do it because it has to be done there's there's no place to deflect it to unless Bob's going to hold up his hand and ask, how can I help you? Maybe he will. I don't know. But, you know, somehow it's, we're just going to have to get it done. I'm not worried about you measuring eggs or laying the tail of so. How, how early do you have to sanction one of these? Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Yep. We have a launch on August 6th. <laughs> Good for you, Chris. Stop. <laughs> Our first one for our club will be September 10th. Wait a second. It still has time. Two tonight. You're going to sanction it so you do the contest well, right? The link doesn't work. <laughs> Can two people sanction a launch at the same time? No. The link goes for right. We got Oh. No. no. All right. Hi. Hi. Two people doing I lost track of the day. All right. Any last questions? Now that half, most of the room is all dissolved, and I appreciate that most of you not <laughs> stuck around, stuck around as long as you did. All right. Well, thank you. Two people, thank you, gentlemen.
Congratulations.